digital currencies have taken over the world of philanthropy. To avoid leaving your contributors hanging, the National Council of Nonprofits advises on its website, don't leave your donors waiting without an option to send cryptocurrencies. Accepting gifts in cryptocurrency, what you need to know is available as a digital collection from the Chronicle of Philanthropy. Online donation is also frequently lauded by other well-known organizations and individuals. According to Yahoo Life, more than 1,300 NGOs around the country now accept Bitcoin donations, a number that is only expected to rise. More than $69 million was donated through the platform. The Giving Block in 2021, a tremendous 1,558% increase over the previous year. Some of the most well-known NGOs in Western North Carolina have taken the jump in light of these developments. Development Director Ali Wilson said Pisgah Legal Services began collecting Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other digital currencies in September through the Ingiven donation platform. There are 18 countries where the Asheville-based organization provides free legal services. When it came to accepting cryptocurrency donations, we truly felt like we could tap into a new source of revenue, she explains. In addition to being a tool for people to show their support, those who own cryptocurrency tend to be younger. We want it to be simple and beneficial for you. How it all works. There is no central bank or government backing for cryptocurrencies. Therefore, they are digital assets with the same utility as conventional currencies. A decentralized online system is used instead to keep track of and exchange the tokens used to represent different currency amounts. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions are possible and a digital public ledger called a blockchain records them. Though cryptocurrency has been valued at over $2 trillion on many occasions, the market is notoriously volatile due to the fact that most cryptocurrencies are not backed by any real-life assets. In Wilson's words, it was not a decision we made lightly. Pisgah legal authorities had this in mind when discussing whether or not to take such contributions. 501c3 Charity can benefit from Ungiven, a platform designed to assist them manage cryptocurrency donations. And given will accept such donations, liquidate them, and distribute the cash earnings to the organization of the donor's choice for a 4% charge. As a result, Pisgah Legal's team won't have to worry about setting up a cryptocurrency wallet or determining whether to sell an asset. This is akin to accepting stock donations, which are likewise managed by a third party, according to Wilson's description of the situation. Wilson is surprised that the foundation hasn't gotten any Bitcoin donations to date, given the general conversation about digital giving and the experiences of other nonprofits. And given, for example, said in October of last year that it had accepted a $10 million Bitcoin payment to an unnamed religious institution. In the words of Wilson, I don't sure if cryptocurrency has actually come to Asheville yet. Even though the organization hasn't done a lot of promotion yet, Pisgah Legal currently has a dedicated contribution button on its website and has indicated that it accepts cryptocurrency in some publications. In Western North Carolina, maybe it's not something that is needed, she adds, adding that it's something we can always evaluate. It's too early to tell. When it comes to adopting cryptocurrencies, 
Mana Food Bank Chief Development Officer Mary Nesbitt says the organization sees no downside. A Feeding America webinar showcasing the Giving Block, which works with over 1,000 NGOs and allows donations in over 70 different cryptocurrencies, convinced Mana Food Bank to begin taking cryptocurrencies. An exchange called Gemini allows consumers to either quickly convert donations into cash or store them in their current form. The Giving Block partners with the Gemini. Mary Nesbitt, the organization's chief development officer, adds, We got more informed and comfortable with the technology and procedure. Internally, the safety of our donors' data is of paramount importance to us, so we took every precaution to ensure that MANA and our donors' data were protected. MANA's website only just recently changed to welcome such contributions from the public. According to Nesbitt, so we don't know yet what the interest level will be and we're eager to see how it'll be accepted. With cryptocurrencies, MANA hopes to bring in new donations in much the same manner as Pisgah Legal does. As with traditional currencies, tax advantages are the most obvious incentive for donors, according to experts. According to Nesbitt, the tax benefits are the same for the donor as real property. A Bitcoin gift can therefore be deducted from one's taxes. The drawbacks of using the internet. Local nonprofits aren't jumping on the bandwagon yet, though. Mountain True's Karim Oleke, communications director, warns that Bitcoin and other proof of work cryptocurrencies might have severe impacts on our climate and world if they gain widespread usage. As mining becomes more and more difficult, computers are used for this verification procedure. This generates a lot of carbon dioxide because of the large computational power required. Bitcoin alone consumes more electricity in a year than Argentina's whole population of around 45 million people, according to a study by Cambridge University. He explains that Mountain True is keeping a watch on cryptocurrency initiatives to implement verification models that use less power. We have wider concerns that would need to be resolved before we began accepting donations in cryptocurrency, he says despite that. Olakia cites increase in number of contentious crypto mining businesses in rural areas as one example. To protest the 24-7 deafening noise and vibration coming from two crypto miners in the vicinity, Residents of Cherokee County, North Carolina start a petition. According to Olecki, some of these mines are public nuances that produce little or no employment, local tax income, or other public advantages. As a result, all of them have the potential to generate considerable volumes of electronic trash. 